15 in Long Beach, California, and we're so honored to have uh, the closing keynote speaker with us, Heidi Hayes Jacobs. Heidi, thank you so much for spending a little time oh, with us. Oh, my pleasure. You are my hero, and it's just like <laughs> so great to have you spending a little time That's very out kind. of your busy day. <laughs> but you know, I, I know about the great work that you do with Curriculum 21. I have your book. Uh, unfortunately, you didn't bring it for a signature, but um, <laughs> we'll have to do that later. But you know, as, as principals are here and, and getting ready to wrap up the day, and you have some great things to share with us um, this morning, what would you say for principals and leaders engaged in attempting to create 21st century schools, what are you finding to be the most important goals for them in your work? It's a great question. I, I think that one of the things I would mention is there's some short-term goals that a lot of people are wrestling with and working on that are really good and really excellent, but they're insufficient. Um, you mentioned Curriculum 21, and in that book, I alluded to the fact that, that schools can begin to encourage teachers by making one upgrade. In other words, replacing uh, elements in a curriculum or assessments with a more contemporary form. Since I wrote that book, I've written a series of books, a four book series with Solution Tree on leading the new literacies, one on digital literacy, one on media, and one on global. And in the course of working through that work, it became clear to me that even that first step needs special attention. So one of the short-term concerns I have is we're confusing access, quick use of the internet, having hardware or tools with real literacy. So. I think there's some sloppy stuff going on, and and I think well intended, but we need more precision in developing the kind of literacy we try to do in print. The second is actually the bigger question. I I felt it was it was very good to start with one upgrade. I don't think it's good enough anymore. I think the longer question has to do with structuring new types of learning environments, and I'll be talking about that a little bit today. That we're looking at significant shifts in the way even physical environments are designed. Different ways that we should begin grouping our kids, because we still adhere to this chronological age grouping, really um, puts a roadblock into personalized learning and other ways of developing, cultivating yes. modern learning. The way we group our, our and configure our, our teachers you know, in Finland, they are seriously looking at 2016, the elimination of departments and disciplines. They're starting to talk about topics and, and issues to begin engaging in. I don't know if that's exactly where we want to go, but I have to tell you, I think we really do need to get out of the shackles of 19th century departmental rigidity and grade level rigidity. And the other is space, which is one that's real fun to talk about, physical space, virtual space, in connection with new ways of looking at time. So I would say that the long-term goal is, is to be starting to look at what you want your learning environment to be like in four, five, six, seven, eight years. Otherwise, what we're doing is we're taking modern tools and sticking them in a 19th century structure. So um, the long-term, I advocate for innovation to de design teams in schools to begin the R&D process. You don't wanna move radically we do need to move radically in the, in the root word of the mean ra of the word radical. In math, radical means uh, root. So the root issues that will, will hold us back are long term. Um, the shorter term needs more refinement, I think, in the new literacies. So thank you for asking. <laughs> I hope it was helpful. Or no, interest. and I could stay here and listen to you for hours. Oh. And so I know that this morning, I, I'm so grateful to you for sharing that little snippet with us and that principals can hear in a little more intimate setting um, and then hear you again uh, in a little bit in the keynote and take something away from our talk this morning and then of course a lot more from your keynote. So thank you so much for joining us. Oh, us. my pleasure. I have so much respect for school leaders. Um, I would advocate they connect more with one another. Usually there's one principal in a building and that can be pretty isolated. Oh, absolutely. So I'm very much into the networking that can occur here yes. at uh, National Association